You are paying for the rent and rehabilitation of thousands of parolees, but after nearly a decade and more than half a billion tax dollars, the state still can't say if programs are changing criminal behavior. Following an investigation by our Cal Matters reporting partners, CBS 13, Julie Watts shows us where your money is going. We're building off the success of so many wonderful, extraordinary programs here. Governor Newsom is set to spend roughly $380 million to reimagine rehabilitation within the state's prison system. But many are asking, are the current costly programs paying off? Turns out the state doesn't have the data to determine if the hundreds of millions we're already spending are changing criminal behavior. It may not be spacious. You know what? It's the greatest feeling in the world. But it's home. That's one of our first dates. And it's where Eugene's heart is. There we are. For the last 24 years, yeah, I think it was 2000. Eugene's home was a four by six cell. No, no, you were born in 2000. Yeah, 1999. That was the year these smiles faded. I um, robbed a, uh, a Shell gas station, Mini Mart, uh, I think for like $97. Uh, I had a pellet gun. Um, I was uh, hooked on uh, crack cocaine. Eugene says his mother was a drug addict. His first arrest at eight years old. Life wasn't easy for me. And he estimates at least 100 after that. Six prison terms later. But I wound up with 40 years to life. But thanks to a series of prison reform laws, he's back home with Barb, his wife, the love of his life. I didn't think I was ever getting out of prison. And this time, Eugene swears he's not going back. There's a difference between somebody saying something and somebody doing something. And um, since he's been out, he's done everything that he said he was going to do. Everything includes completing the state's parolee reentry program. Name STOP, short for Specialized Treatment for Optimized Programming, designed to help parolees successfully re-enter society so they don't return to prison. STOP is run by four private contractors, some with ties to former California prison leaders. They contract with nearly 200 nonprofits and for-profit subcontractors, which provide free parolee housing and rehabilitation in roughly 450 halfway houses and treatment centers, like the one Eugene lived in for the last nine months. Getting out of prison this time, it, it, it was totally different from all the other times I got out. While STOP is voluntary, for Eugene, living in a halfway house was a condition of his release, and STOP's program is free. After two decades in prison, Eugene was grateful for the practical reentry tools he learned. I, I, I went to classes to learn about, you know, my phone. But he says the mandatory programs he attended. Angry management class. Did little to further rehabilitate him. Criminal thinking. Because they were the same programs. I had like. He'd already completed in prison. 21 certificates. I, I A can't. common frustration among stop parolees interviewed. The programs are great uh, on paper, right? How they're being implemented is a whole nother question. That's what Cal Matters reporter by Rhonda Lyons began investigating a year ago when the Corrections Department couldn't answer a simple question about the reentry program that costs taxpayers a hundred million a year. And I said, oh, they can't even clearly answer how many people participate in this expensive program. So then I just started digging. And she uncovered State officials rarely review the private contractors and their subcontractors running these programs. Some subcontractors that manage reentry homes lease their facilities from their own executives, raising conflict of interest red flags. And several subcontractors are operating with suspended business licenses or revoked nonprofit statuses, meaning they're barred from doing business in California while they're being paid by the state. The state had no idea. I asked them if they knew about this, and their, their simple answer to me was no, period. But maybe more concerning, Cal Matters found the state doesn't collect data on how many stop parolees find jobs or how many return to prison for another crime. The data they do have reveals fewer than half the stop parolees completed even one of the services offered. As you've noted in your own reporting, the inspector general, the auditor, the LAO, I mean, constantly these institutions are telling the state we're spending money on rehab, but we're not doing a very good job of tracking 
whether it's working well. She points to our recent investigation on in-prison rehabilitation, which also found the state's data is outdated, inaccurate, or doesn't exist. I need that data. The rest of the legislature needs that data. Assembly Public Safety Chair Reggie Jones-Sawyer says while California has reduced its prison population through new laws that increase early release credits, he wants data to assure the public that those former inmates are not out committing more crimes. Data driven innovation. The lack of data frustrates both critics and supporters of the governor's $380 million plan to reimagine rehabilitation. They want data on the state's current investment before spending more. We can't really say because the state hasn't done a good job of collecting data as we've spent more and more money on rehab. So absent state data on how well the reentry program works. This one is from Chad. Cal Matters went to the source. You have a prepaid call from Sir. Contacting nearly 150 recently released inmates and parolees to get their opinion of stop. This is a great program. Most, like Jack, who went away at 17, appreciated the help getting back on their feet after decades in prison. Yeah, after 23 years, I had never had any credit. I had never had ID, never had a jobless license. I never had a job. Jack said he thrived while living in program housing in Sacramento. I was able to save enough money to buy me a car, go to work every day. But many, like Jack, went back to prison after finishing the program. At that time, I was a 41-year-old man. I didn't have no credit. When he couldn't find an apartment, he says his parole officer sent him back to live with family in L.A. So I had to go back exactly to the same apartment building where I was arrested at when I was a kid. He got caught with a gun there and sent back to prison. He wasn't out of prison long, maybe a year. All four stop contractors told Cal Matters they were proud of their work, but they declined interviews with CBS. One provided a statement to CBS saying it conducts self-audits and welcomes CDCR to conduct site visits, but wouldn't answer our questions, noting they must, quote, receive approval from CDCR. Another contractor simply referred us to CDCR. Eugene insists he's not going back but he doesn't credit the programming. For once in my life, I was thinking about someone else. For the 20-some years, she stuck with me through thick and thin. Eugene completed his required programming last month. You can use the tools that people have given you to help you become a better person. And is now making new memories with Barb. But only you can make that decision. Back home. You can't believe how proud I am of him. Where his heart is. In response to CalMatters findings, the Corrections Department has committed to track recidivism and employment among stop participants to prevent unlicensed vendors from managing facilities. The agency says it is working on a tool to better track contractors and will soon issue a program report. Eye opening as always, Julie, thank you. CDCR declined an interview, but did provide a lengthy statement describing the program. We'll put that on our website along with a full link to the CalMatters investigation.